Welcome to Introduction to Open Demand. Let's take a look at the outline of the talk. First, I will review some cluster basics, which will help us to understand the terminology we're going to use later in the talk. Then I will talk about what Open Demand is and how to use it. After that, I will show how to use the various apps available on Open Demand and provide some useful tips and tricks. So what is a cluster? A cluster is a large system, usually consisting of hundreds and thousands of rack-mounted computers, also called nodes. Based on the different rows of the nodes, we divide them further into login nodes and compute nodes. A cluster usually has a few login nodes and many compute nodes. The login nodes are used to allow users to log into the system, while the compute nodes are used to do the computational work for the user. A cluster node usually has a large amount of memory, typically several hundreds of gigabytes. Some nodes have even more than one terabyte of memory. A cluster often has a large storage shared across all the nodes on the cluster. The nodes and the storage system are interconnected with a high-speed interconnection network. This makes it suitable for large-scale parallel applications and high-throughput applications. A cluster is shared by many users. If you log into a cluster, you will see hundreds and thousands of jobs running concurrently on the cluster. Since the cluster is a shared system, we don't allow users to log into the system and run things randomly. We use a tool called Slurm to schedule jobs and manage the compute nodes. Slurm will make sure the cluster is efficiently used and fairly shared by all users. Users need to provide Slurm with job options for their job resource requests. I listed a few commonly used job options here. Each of these options has a corresponding field in the OD app forms, as we will see later. Another commonly used term is module. A module contains all the information necessary to set up a working environment for a particular application on a cluster. We use a tool called LMOD to manage all the modules. In order to use a specific software package, you must first load the module with the command module load followed by the module name. You can list all the modules currently loaded with the command module list. If you want to see all the modules available on the cluster, you can run the command module avail. But if you run module avail followed by a package name, it will only show you the availability of that package. Now let's move on to Open On Demand. Open On Demand, or OD for short, is an open source web portal for HPC centers. It provides users with an easy to use web interface to their HPC clusters. Many universities and organizations have deployed OD at their site and are using it productively. The number of sites continues to grow. The benefits of OD include the following. First, it is web-based. No additional software needs to be installed on your local machine, except for a modern browser, which is available on almost all personal computers. Secondly, it is easy to use and simple to learn. Thirdly, it is one of the easiest ways to run GUI applications on a cluster remotely. Traditionally, we access a cluster using SSH. When the user logs into a cluster through SSH, they are presented with a shell command line prompt. At the command line prompt, 
the user can type any commands to interact with the cluster. This is called the command line approach. There are pros and cons to this approach. For experienced users, this approach is highly efficient. It is also good for large-scale job submission and data processing. However, the command line has a high learning curve. It is also not GUI application friendly. The web-based OOD has its pros and cons too. It is simple to use and easy to learn. It is GUI application friendly, and it does not require users to install additional software on their computers. On the other hand, it is not as efficient as a command line approach, and it could be challenging if you want to submit a large array of jobs. Who has access to our OD portals? You might think that anyone who has an account on one of our clusters can access its OD, but the answer is a little bit more complicated than that. If you have a research account on a cluster, you automatically have access to the OD on the cluster. Depending on which cluster you're using, the OD URL is uh, different. If you have an account for a course that uses OD on a cluster, you can access that OD through course name dot ycrc.yale.edu. If you have a project-based account and the project has its own OD URL, then you can access that OD through project name dot ycrc.yale.edu. What if the course or the project doesn't have its own OD URL? Then the course accounts or the project accounts don't have access to any of our OD portals. Once you know you have access to OD, you need to type in the correct URL based on the type of your account. However, no matter what type of account you are going to use with OOD, you should always log in with your NetID. The NetID you provide must use all lowercase letters. If you are off campus, you need to log into the Yale VPN first. I will show you how to use OOD. I'm using the Grace OOD for this demo. So I type the URL of Grace OOD in the browser, press enter, and it redirects me to the Yale Cast login page. Once I pass the authentication, I'm allowed to log into the Grace OOD. What you're seeing here is a dashboard of the Grace OOD. At the center, the most commonly used apps are pinned here for easy access. You can access uh, all the apps from the menus at the top of the dashboard. The available apps are divided roughly into five categories, files, jobs, interactive apps, utilities, and clusters. We will cover most of the apps throughout the rest of the talk. Let's begin by looking at Shell Access. It is located under clusters. Let's click uh, Grace Shell Access. Then an SSH session is now opened in the browser. The SSH session is connected to one of the Grace login nodes. I can run any commands at the command prompt. The Shell Access app is a web-based secure shell client. It functions similarly to the SSH program on Mac OS and Linux or Party and Mobile Xterm on Windows. These programs are typically used to log in to a cluster. However, on our clusters, the OD shell access is simpler to use. When using the SSH program on your local machine, 
you must first upload your SSH key to one of our clusters. When using the shell app on OOD, you don't need to do so. This is because key authentication has been set up properly between the on-demand node and the login nodes when your account is created on our clusters. This makes OOD shell access a valuable tool for onboarding our new users. Next, let's take a look at the file manager. The file manager allows you to browse through your files and directories in a cluster. Under files, there is a list of directories. You can open any of them directly in the file manager. Let's switch back to the OD dashboard. Let's click a files, home directory, and then click a subdirectory within it to illustrate how to use a file manager. On the top right, there are several buttons you can use to manage your files and directories in the directory you are currently viewing. You can open the current directory in the terminal, create a new file or a new directory within it, or upload the files into the directory. You can download, copy or move, and delete selected files or directories. You can also operate on a particular file or directory using the pull down menu next to it. A directory has three operations, rename, download, and delete. A file has two more operations, they are view and edit. In this slide, I want to offer a few tips on how to use the file manager effectively. First, please remember that the file manager is not suitable for transferring very large data files. Typically, files less than 10 gigabytes are fine. Secondly, you can check the contents of a file without downloading it. All you need to do is to click the pull down menu next to the file and select a view to display its contents directly in the browser. The last tip is for Windows users. If you have created a job script on your Windows machine and then uploaded it to the cluster, your job may fail due to the DOS line breakers in the job file. You can fix it with the command DOS to Unix. By default, the files menu lists your home, project, and scratch directories. You can customize the list using the following commands. To add one or more path to the list, you can use the command od underscore add underscore path. It will prompt you to add one path at a time until you type and to discontinue. To remove a path you have added, you can run the command od underscore remove underscore path. To view all the paths you have added, you can run the command od underscore list underscore path. After you make any changes to the list of paths, you need to restart the web server to make the change visible right away in od. This is done by clicking Develop, Restart Web Server. Next, we will explore interactive apps available in OD, which really showcases the strength of OD. The picture shows the interactive apps currently provided in Grace OD. The list of available apps may be slightly different in other clusters, and it may change over time on the same cluster. There are two different types of interactive apps, VNC-based apps and server apps. VNC-based interactive apps begin by starting a VNC server first and then launching the application. When you connect to the application, you do so through the remote desktop provided by the VNC server. On the other hand, the server app don't use a VNC server. You connect to the application server directly. All the apps use a similar form to take input from users. 
The form provides fields for job resource requests, additional modules, and other information necessary for the app to run. If you don't know what to put in the form, you can use the default value in most cases. Now let's take a look at the server apps. Let's begin with Jupyter. Jupyter provides a web-based interactive development environment for users to develop and share code, data, and visualizations. The Jupyter command used in the Jupyter app is provided through a Conda environment. We provide a centralized Jupyter Conda environment called YCRC default for testing only. You should create your own Jupyter Conda environment that is tailored for your work. When creating your own Conda environment for Jupyter, you must include the following two packages, Jupyter and Jupyter Lab. To make your Conda environment available to OOD, you need to run the command ycrc underscore conda underscore env dot sh space update. We use two environment variables to control where to install the Conda packages. They are predefined and point to subdirectories in your project directory. If you need to use the different directories, for example, using gips instead of project, you can specify the new path in conda underscore env underscore path and conda underscore pkg underscore drs or capitals and export them in bash rc. By default, the Jupyter app starts the Jupyter notebook in the browser. If you want to use the Jupyter lab interface, click the checkbox for starting Jupyter lab. When you are done using Jupyter, be sure to stop your session immediately. If you don't do so, it will continue running until the allocated hours have been used up. To stop a Jupyter notebook, click the quit button on the top right of the notebook navigation interface. To stop a Jupyter lab, click file and then click shutdown from the menu. Click logout only if you intend to reconnect to the same Jupyter server later. However, keep in mind that the resources may remain idle during the period between the two connections. The next server app we're going to discuss is our Studio server, which has the following features. First, it uses the R from an R module, which has many pre-installed R packages and has been tested extensively. Secondly, it works seamlessly with Bioconductor, which provides several hundreds of R packages in bioinformatics. The R Studio server is launched inside an app tuner. However, users don't notice any difference. They can easily install additional R packages local to their accounts. The R Studio server app works well with other modules on the cluster, while the RStudio desktop OOD app doesn't because of the Conda environment it relies on. RStudio server itself offers additional advantages over RStudio desktop. It utilizes CPUs and memories better than RStudio desktop. It integrates better with the browser by displaying the R session directly in the browser. Lastly, it eliminates the need to go through the no VNC clipboard, which simplifies the copy and paste between your local machine and the R session. Stopping an R Studio server instance takes two steps. First, you need to type Q parentheses in the RStudio console to exit your session connected to the RStudio server. Second, you need to click the delete button to stop the RStudio server instance completely. One common issue our users have experienced 
is difficulty connecting to the RStudio server. When that happens, you need to delete the RStudio server instance first and then run clean underscore rstudio.sh to remove all the RStudio state files. The next app we will look at is RStudio Desktop. You need to use this app if you need a special R environment or a specific version of R that is not provided by RStudio server. Before using RStudio Desktop, you need to provide a conda environment that has at least three packages installed, including R base, R essentials, and R Studio Desktop. Mixing a conda environment with software modules on a cluster is not recommended. You should make the conda environment self-contained. To make your conda environment available to OOD, you need to run the command ycrc conda env.sh space update. If you have used the non-default path for your conda environments and packages, you need to set the new path in the two conda environment variables and export them in .bashrc. When you are done using RStudio desktop, be sure to stop your session manually. If you don't do so, it will continue running until the hours allocated to the session has been used up. To stop an RStudio desktop session, you can click a file and then click a quit session or type Q parentheses in the RStudio console. This will ensure a clean shutdown of the session. If a session becomes frozen, then you have to stop it by clicking the delete button next to the running session. Other fancy based OD apps include MATLAB, Mathematica, and Stata. They're very easy to use. Since these apps don't use any conda environment, you can add software modules available on the clusters for them. Just to provide the module names in an additional modules field and separate the module names by a space. When you are done, please exit the program to have a clean termination of the OOD session. We may add more GUI applications in OOD if they will be used by many users. All of the VNC based interactive apps are actually launched through a VNC remote desktop. So if the application you want to use is not provided as a standalone app, you can always launch the remote desktop app first and then run the application from the terminal running within the remote desktop. To copy and paste between your local machine, and the remote desktop session, you can use the VNC clipboard. To access the, the clipboard, you need to click the button on the left side of the remote desktop window and then click clipboard. To copy and paste the text from your local machine to the remote desktop session, First, copy the text using Ctrl C on Windows or Command C on Mac OS. And then paste it to the clipboard. The text is now available for pasting into the application running within the remote desktop session. The clipboard is required if you use Safari or Firefox to access OOD. It is not required for Chrome. This means you can directly copy and paste between your local machine and the remote desktop if you are using Google Chrome. To stop a remote desktop session, you can click System and then click Logout. 
the session will be terminated properly and all resources allocated to the session will be released. In the slide, we will share some best practices on using interactive apps. Interactive apps provide a convenient way to run GUI applications on the cluster. The best are used for developing code and visualizing results. We do not recommend you using them for long running jobs. OD interactive sessions should typically be finished in 24 hours. If your application does a lot of calculation and uses almost the entire CPU core, you should consider using two CPU cores to improve the performance. You should not request for more than two CPU cores, however, unless your application is parallelized. In the OOD app forms, we have provided fields for commonly used SNRM job options. You can fine tune the job specifications using additional job options. For example, to request a V100 GPU node, you can specify this specification in additional job options. When you lose track of your running sessions, you can find them in my interactive sessions page. It is located on the top menu bar. You should always stop your sessions immediately after you are done with any of the interactive apps in OOD. Please remember closing a tab in the browser where the session is displayed does not terminate the session. You must stop a session properly based on what we have discussed earlier. Only use the delete button in the following cases. To stop an RStudio server, to stop a code server, or stop a frozen session. Reduce waste of resources on the cluster. We have implemented interactive app resource limits that are specific to the OD interactive apps. First, each user can have at most four concurrent OD interactive app sessions on a cluster. In addition, we have reduced the wall time limit for most of the partitions as we think any job that needs a longer time should be submitted as a batch job. The last category of apps we will take a look at is for job creation and management. There are two apps in this category, Active Jobs and Job Composer. Active Jobs allow us to view jobs on the cluster. Using this app, I can view my jobs only or view all jobs on the cluster. I can click this arrow here to view more detail about a particular job. I can use a filter to search jobs that satisfy certain criteria. For example, I can view all queued jobs or a job by a particular user or jobs in the big mem partition or jobs belong to a certain group and so on. Job Composer allows us to submit batch job to the cluster through OD. You can create a job from the default template or from a, a user-defined template or from a specified path or from an existing job. Let's try from a default template. A job is created. We don't need to modify anything. And if we click Submit, then the job is submitted and it, it is running now. So the job is finished. The job details 
are showing on the right. The job working directory is shown here. It is determined by OOD. And the job contents is shown here. It does some trivial things to illustrate how it works. A typical workflow for using the job composer is as follows. First, create a job using one of the methods provided by the job composer. Then copy the necessary files into the job directory. Step three, modify the job script to run the program for your job. Step four, submit the job from job composer. Step five, after the job is done, collect the results. We have covered most of the features our OOD portal can provide. Now let's take a look at how to log out OOD properly. OOD provides a logout link on its dashboard. However, you should never rely on this link to log out. You should always clean the cookies in your cache and close the browser to log out. If you are on a Chromebook or Chromebox, you also need to reboot your device in order to log out completely. You can help us to improve OOD. You can request uh, for new features to existing apps or request uh, for new apps. If you need help, you can email us at hpc at yale.edu or wti.support at yale.edu. You can get a lot of useful information from our website at research.computing.el.edu. You can attend the office hour over Zoom on every Wednesday at 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. You can also schedule an appointment during working hours with one of the analysts based on their specialties as listed in the link below. With that, thank you for watching the introduction to Open On Demand.